for your UM Lighter projects. Um, my name is Perlinda, and I am the reg Assistant Registrar in University Malaya. And, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so for today, um, yeah, all right. Okay. So for today's session is specially curated for UM Lighter projects because we want to help you um, to strategize your method in delivering the best um, output at the end of the day. So um, if I may uh, introduce the, our trainer for today, uh, Senior Dr. Siti Uzairah Muhammad Tobi is a Senior Lecturer at UTM Razak Faculty of Technology and Informatics. University Technology Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Dr. Siti holds a Doctor of Philosophy in Facilities Management with seven years working experience in property and asset and facilities management field. So her research interests include asset and property management, facilities management and social enterprise. Her expertise includes qualitative study and vivo analysis for qualitative study and also research methodology. And in fact, the city has, uh, has conducted many workshops and trainings related to qualitative research and the in vivo applications in Malaysia. So we believe that the city experience and expertise could help you to strategize your UM Lighter research and to get the best result at the end of the day. Um, so before we begin, uh, Dr. Aza unfortunately won't be able to join us today. Uh, she has other commitment, but she sent her warm regards and she hope everyone will benefit from today's program. Um, this will be a four hours workshop with a short break in the middle of the session. And that will record the session for only UM Lighter internal use. So we won't be broadcasting this recording, uh, recording video uh, outside um, as usual like our other webinar. So Dr. Siti, if you are ready, um, the session is yours. Okay, thank you, uh, Miss Opwen, <laughs> Perlinda Praslin, for your uh, quick brief introduction of myself. Um, so I think you will also share my slide later, right? Okay, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Rabbi Shrani Sadri wa Estrili Amri, Wahanin Odata Milisani Prokali, good morning and good day to everybody. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Uh, thank you for UTM Lighter uh, invited me, uh, giving me opportunity to share my um, a bit of my knowledge and experience in conducting um, qualitative research. I myself or also have been uh, receiving um, several grants, um, national and so on, uh, international fund. Um, and my research is really focused on um, the method or the approach I'm using is either fully qualitative or mixed method uh, research approach. So um, I've been told that I think it might not be not too late yet for me to congratulate all of you as recipient of, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, teaching and learning something like that grant, okay, from uh, internal grant from UM. So congratulations to all. Um, and uh, I think most of you is um, doctors and maybe professors also joining this. It's not student. Most of it is lecturers. So I'm hoping that um, I can uh, give you some uh, first uh, for today class for the first day. I'm giving uh, the understanding of the paradigm and I'm also exploring five um, few approaches that might be appropriate or suitable to use as a qualitative research method and also um, the final part for this today class will be on the qualitative data collection technique. So these are the things that we're going to cover today and uh, another half will be tomorrow. And I think, uh, and um, through my, my sharing, you can ask anything, uh, but if I um, think the thing that I'm going to explain not yet finished, I will answer at the end of the, but might be good if we have like each for each slide, we can have Q&A session, short Q&A session. Okay, this is all from me. So I don't know whether even half the participant is here, but I think uh, we already uh, 10 minutes past nine. Okay, so Miss Linda or Madam Linda, can we start with the slide? Can everybody um, hear my voice clearly? Hello. 
Boleh yes. doktor, yes we can hear yes, you clearly. Sorry. Great. Okay, I can see there's a chat, chat box over here. Morning, okay. Thank you everybody for joining us, joining us to for this uh, to this session. So uh, at the beginning, I will like explain a little bit on the paradigm to give you understanding what is um, how how it's relate with quantitative and qualitative data. But um, as far that through my experience, I noticed that um, when we have discussion in the research methodology section in our report writing in the research grant, usually the reader or the panel might not um, emphasize or give um, like um, more focus on the discussion on the paradigm part. Um, through my experience, when I um, uh, receiving a uh, research grant, they would like to look more on um, the data, how it's been collected, and mm, the important of all is the finding and the output and uh, who will be benefit from it, who are the beneficiaries, what they are looking more in terms of important might be the output and like the sampling as all. It's not, um, I think it merely not emphasize or a little bit emphasize on the paradigm. But however, if we have we we have a student and want they want they currently do PhD um, uh, to have discussion on the paradigm or philosophical research philosophy, some school of thought might find it um, important to put inside um, uh, this is chapter. So it depends. Uh, but usually, in, in uh, if you compare like um, research grant and uh, fully research like a PhD research, usually they emphasize um, a bit lighter on the research grant compared to the um, PhD research. Okay, so um, so I can, can take control. So I take control. So can you? See? Okay, so I'm I, I'm. Is the slide big enough or I? This is my first time using Microsoft Teams. Is it okay? You can see the slide? Uh, okay, okay, we can see. Okay, not too small, eh? but it's a bit small to me. I don't know whether... Because when I take control, it becomes smaller. Is that is is it the way like that, uh, Felinda? Mm, betul, Doctor. Okay. Kalau take control, it's a little bit small. Okay, alright, okay. So, uh, so first of all, just just, just give some um, um, initial uh, okay um, idea on what why we do research as a mission because we uh, we try to provide a solution to whatever have changing around us. So we are like similar also like practitioner. They also do research and development, but maybe the way that um, the the big different or the major different between academician and practitioner because the way that we prepare report. So um, we always refer to the uh, body of knowledge. So body of knowledge is basically a literature. So compared to the practitioner, they are more like um, practical solving problem that reporting all the things are reporting on how they're going to, how they solve it and um, uh, put their finding at the end. So um, if you compare with academician, um, it is the way that we structure our report writing will be uh, very transparent. We, we like starting from uh, the literature, where is the theory that we get, uh, referring to other scholars, uh, putting the method uh, clearly structured, very transparent so other people can learn. So our intention in uh, do report writing or academic writing is for others to learn, okay? Um, okay, next, uh, sorry. <laughs> All right, so why why this is methodology? Because um, um, it helps us to prove, it is process to, to help us to prove whether um, the solution that we propose is actually a valid or strong solution. So having the process of data collection and data analysis, choosing the right approach, discussing the paradigm will but better help to understand the situation and give um, understanding to the reader or to the panel to, to show them that um, the data, the sample that we chose, the approach that we chose is the one that most appropriate 
there is no such thing as the the uh, right or the wrong. Usually, it's the most appropriate because it's the same carry the same principles from our viewpoint, either quantity or quality, that which we will see about that later. So, because we want to decide this is the best for us. Okay. I think I no need to um, elaborate this further since all of you have gone through the um, PhD process yourself. So, um, data basically is a raw um, set of value. Uh, it could be quantitative or qualitative. So, um, if it is something that we can be quantified, numerical, tested, so the base will be quantitative. And if, it, if it's very subjective, needs some um, exploration, in-depth understanding, very subjective, so it will fall under qualitative uh, type of data. So, after it's being processed, after, it's, we, got, after we analyze the data, it's become a useful information that we're going to present in our report. Okay, so whatever is objective measure, fact and figure, you can put, can put formula on it, you can test it. Um, it does not involve yourself into that formula. You not, you not part, the research is not part of the instrument, so the nature is quantitative and it is scientifically proven. However, on the other hand, if it's um, um, the idea that you construct, you get some idea, you get the conceptual idea on something which you can pre re uh, present the idea in terms of your theoretical framework or developing your conceptual framework, um, and then you're going to collect data that um, researcher become part of the instrument to collect and analyze the data. So. When I say researcher become a part of the instrument, you are the person who is going to interpret and analyze the data, which you gather through your, uh, when you collect data on site, by as mining and exploring, of course. So you are part of the instrument, so that it is subjective measure. So we will look into that later about um, researcher is part of the instrument of the data collection. Uh, okay, so just just to give example, um, any any research area, any problem, it can be done either extremely using quantitative type of data or extremely using qualitative or both of it. So it depends on how we decide how we see the problem and how we decide to solve the problem. So it depends. So I'm giving example over here. If, uh, for example, you want to do research about customer satisfaction, is it you're going to measure the customer satisfaction or you're going to see what complaints are most made by customer or the reason why complaint, such complaints are made? So if you're going to measure, you need to have a quantitative data while if you going to understand and explore or reason why so um, you need to have a qualitative data okay so some might go to the extreme of quantity some might go to the extreme of quality or you might have both so you if you want to have both so you might need the both of data lah, quantitative or quantitative to better understand your customer however um, it's not that um, First of all, because you need, to look, you need to look at the nature of the problem. Some problem, it needs qualitative data to solve it. Some problem, in order to solve it, you need to have a quantitative data. However, there is a, also research that um, have their way or it's not style. Their pre preference in doing something. Some people are more comfortable in doing your their work in using quantitative data maybe they think it is more strong more valid because it's use calculation validation with some um, um a very accurate value compared to qualitative data however i believe um uh, the the um assumption is not that quite right it, it will depend some some if you go to the extreme that um 
like I can see from your list, there are lots of you also do um, research related to medical. So if you want to know how the person react to some, you know, chemotherapy, chemotherapy or what are the symptom of patient uh, COVID nineteen patients. So you want to know how they are undergo things. So uh, which involve feelings and something very subjective. We might also. Um, look at the qualitative as important type of data. Okay. So we shouldn't be a double standard, um, either quantity or quality, both are um, fairly um, play a, a, main, a main important role. Okay, so uh, if the data is you collect on site, you collect by yourself, you first hand collected, so we call it primary. So if you get from somebody else or like, from archive, from statistic, a report, from um, some other sources that the data is already there. You just take a part of it for your data, so it's become secondary data. So whatever you take uh, on the site by yourself, first hand collected, so it will be the primary data. So um, it will, it shouldn't be double standard as well. Some research might help fully primary data or primary data become their main data in their research, some researchers might have secondary data as their main data. So we cannot simply, <laughs> I need to admit somebody waiting in the lobby. I don't know whether somebody um, appear in the slide. Okay, um, what I'm just saying just now. Um, okay, so secondary, some, some school of thought or some area of study, they need secondary data, for example, if I study, um, if I'm doing uh, company investment, corporate investment, I will like, like I will have the ten years back or port of port for portfolio of company to see how the direction of how the um, the performance of the company before I'm investing to the company. So I'm using secondary data. So it 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 it's not that um, if you do fully research, you must do primary data. Uh, you cannot do secondary data. So it 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 really depends because research is so. Uh, many area of study, some do need secondary data, some do need primary data as their main data. Okay, as long as you understand um, uh, the what um, the term primary is first hand collected, secondary is you take from some, something else, it can be your main data if it's appropriate to your study. Um, so in order for me to better explain the paradigm, um, it's not that paradigm is only for quantity qualitative researcher only. It's actually paradigm is we discuss before we we decide quantitative or qualitative is the best for us, uh, the most appropriate for our research. We first tell people, look, this is how we, I stand. So this is how I look things. So the way that I view things like this. So this is, that is all about paradigm. It's where you put yourself, where you position yourself. So. Uh, research paradigm or research philosophy uh, principles or foundation is about where you you put your staff in the position whether you see things from the qualitative viewpoint or quantitative viewpoint therefore you're going to have um, data that respectively according to your viewpoint so in order for me to discuss about paradigm i will um, uh, quote or use uh, I mean, quote, uh, the nested model from Kagio Glue and the, also the research onion from Saunders because inside their figures about research methodology, they, they do have the philosophy inside their, uh, you know, how they construct the research methodology, uh, the big picture. Okay, so the nested model and research onion. So first, um, I, I'm uh, I'm showing to you the nested model by by logo at all. So according to the uh, Kagyoglu, there are the research methodology constitute of three main component, which started with the philosophy, followed by the approach and the techniques. So philosophy basically you discuss your paradigm, and then approach you might have survey approach, case study approach, or I think. What I found yesterday when I read some of the um, your proposal, you do have like case based model or whatever model or approach you can have 
you you want to have inside your study for your study. So after you discuss the paradigm, you have you can have the research approach. And then when you have the approach, when you want to um, the third layer is about collecting the data on the site. So that will be the data collection technique and data analysis technique as the third component or the third layer. Okay, so I will say the third component lah, third element because. Uh, Lestat model called this as element. Later in the sounders, they, he called it as um, layers of onion. Okay, so first, um, but I'm not going to discuss philosophy approach and techniques in one day. So for today, we'll look into philosophy first and approach. Tomorrow, we're going to look at the um, how we're going to collect and also analyze data. So for this slide, we'll look into uh, mainly on the paradigm okay so research philosophy approach and research technique i hope you understand my explanation on philosophy is about the paradigm approach is um what approach you're going to have like case study approach phenomenology ethnography grounded theory uh and then technique is simply um uh, a method or technique that you're going to collect and analyze your data so um if i, I hope you can see it large enough on your monitor so because it might in my monitor it's a bit in my monitor on my monitor it's a bit small um so the research onion according okay um according to saunders he has this um more layers or more element compared to kagioglu the nested model which one is better it's up to you some researcher they like to have something very um, detail some researcher wants something very a bit flexible so if you want to some have something very flexible you can have the nested model but if you think to have something very specific and structured can better guide you in you doing your research you can have research onion as um, to to adopt as discussing your research methodology so seems seems like uh uh Kyle blue in the nested model so it's he started with philosophy uh as you can see um like this is 2007 sounders always uh, update his version so you might have uh can look at um, the new updated version on the your yeah, um onion itself but the, the the foundation is the same it's a layer of of circle so it's he start with philosophy which you have either positivism interpretism subjectivism uh, uh interpretives radical so we'll uh, we will look into this later first i will discuss the component first uh before discussing the paradigm itself and then the second layer according to saunders will be is it deductive or inductive um deductive inductive the process is the process uh, the process of you acquiring knowledge so if you get the information from the theory from the lr that's mean the process of you acquire knowledge uh, from the theory if on the other hand the process of you acquire knowledge is from the data that you collected that's mean it is inductive process so um, although since our focus on this workshop will be in qualitative study. Although as a quality, qualitative researcher, we get the information when we collect the data from the field, from the data that we collected. So we have inductive as our process, but we do starting our research with the knowledge from the theory, which are the literature review. So we do um uh apply in deductive process first before we go to inductive process when we acquire knowledge and the third layer is about um research strategies okay so inside nested approach these strategies are known as inside sorry nested model these strategy layers of strategies considered as approach in this uh, onion, he considered as research strategies, survey, case study, action research, grounded theory, or any other research approach will fall under this layer. And then we have research choice. 
So after you decide what approach you have, first you need to decide what is your paradigm or philosophy, how you see things, are you going to have deductive or inductive process of acquiring knowledge before you go to deploy your research strategies. And then um, after the strategies, you're going to have the research choices, either you're going to adopt mono method, mixed method or multi method. So uh, a brief on the mono method will be just one method. Mixed method is combination of maybe quality, quantity or experiment with quality, experiment with quantity. So since I'm come from the social uh, science or build environment background, I'm not involving directly in any experiments. So my understanding or knowledge that I have will be limited to the quantitative and qualitative part. But I believe many of you also come from medical background. So you might have some experiment, may, maybe have some experiment based um, uh, data collection or the way that you do research inside your research work. So it, it can, you can, can have those also under the mixed method. Okay. So mixed methods, that means different type of data different type of data like quantity, quality, experiment, uh, software testing combined. So mix, different type of data, we call it mix. What about multi? Multi is, you have more than one type of data collection, but it's belong in, diff, in the same group of data. For example, uh, I'm having interview as my data collection as well as observation. So observation and interview uh, two different type of data collection, two different method of data collection, but from the same type of uh, data group, which is qualitative. So we call it multi-method. And then we have time horizon, whether you're going to cross-sectional or longitudinal, it might have some prolonged time, or you concurrently collect data um, uh, different type of data concurrently if you have like um, either you by your own or by your research group and then finally um, it's focused on the sampling like like really how you collect data so what is the sampling is it interview is it questionnaire is it focus group discussion so there is a lot of time a um, lot of several techniques of data collection so it depends so um although i say observation and uh, you know the focus group discussion later we will see that um, um observation or focus group discussion also can be quantity or qualitative so it depends on how the session being conducted if like the observation i will i i will look i will discuss that later so i i don't want you to like okay observation is qualitative no so please like if you learn something learn until the end so you will understand it can be also quantity it can be also qualitative in the focus group discussion and also observation so um looking at some researcher they like combine um, taking a nested model and research onion into the new model called modified model so it says he agree that philosophy is the basis and then approach combines the strategies choices time horizon and research modes uh, he's taking the foundation of the nested model and the research technique is simply the final element of it, okay? So if we compare in the table form, it'll, it will be look like this. So it doesn't matter which... Okay, back... <laughs> okay, sorry, okay. So it doesn't matter whether you want to have nested model, onion, or modified model, it's up to you, like I say which one that you prefer or comfort to work with. Are you going to adopt the nested model or is the Some want something to be a bit flexible. Some some want some approach that very rigid. So it's depend. Nothing is um, good or can be compared. All are equally good. Okay, fairly good. All right. Um, okay, to discuss about, so uh, this, this slide is about to, to, to give you understanding on the paradigm part, so the philosophical. So most of the quality, most of the research methodology book usually they inclusively discuss the paradigm. They say this is just adopting the pragmatic blah blah blah, for example. So um, on this slide, and 
on this slide, also in my book, um, I wrote a few books on the research methodology. So I, I practically um, put it outside exclusively to show to you looks. Um, in general, you can divide yourself like you need to have to, you need to decide whether you are on the left side or on the right side. So if you're on the left, you're going to have, this is on your my left, <laughs> okay? So positivism is um, how you view things, interpretism or social constructionism is how you view things. So you, if you interpret some phenomena or you construct some idea, that means you are on the social constructionism side. If you are uh, looking at this, scientific measures, real fact to everybody, so you are holding the positivism paradigm, okay? So I'm just have this as a basis to give you a better understanding what does it mean by holding a quantitative and qualitative viewpoint, okay? So to discuss research philosophy or research paradigm, the discussions should consist of three assumptions. We call it assumption. Those assumptions is called as ontology, epistemology, and ideology. Okay, ontology. So, in order for you to discuss your paradigm, you need to describe and explain how you see things through these three assumptions, which call ontology, epistemology, and ideology. So, what is ontology? So, ontology is what count as reality in many ways to structure your research as type of knowledge. So if you look at the, your left, if your ontology or the reality that you look at, the phenomena that you're going to study is real fact to everybody. It is in the control environment. For example, in the lab, you conduct some uh, experiment, you test something, you measure, you put formula on it. So it is real fact to everybody. It's very clear. It's about the value. So it is realism. So ontology, you hold the realism assumption. While on the other hand, on the left, it's the way that you structure your knowledge are based on the idea like, um, for example, I'm developing some, I want to developing, I want to have some, you know, guideline on how strategies or guideline on how people should should take care of yourself after being diagnosed uh, with symptom COVID symptoms. So I have some idea on it. So it is not predetermined, but socially constructed. So I mean, it is idea or concept. So you might hold a philosophy, ontology toward idealism. Okay. Or maybe you want to have like some models, some guidelines or Usually, whatever involve human, uh, understanding human, um, that means you are conceptual, you conceptual, you having the conceptual idea. So it's more on idealism. So the second assumption is how can you, how can the knowledge of that reality being established? That means how are you going to collect your data for your reality. So if the data that you collected, you're going to collect it is its objective measure, which involve fair and figure, experiment, simulation, testing, quantification. So that means it is objective measure. On the other hand, if the knowledge you establish means the data that you collected is subjective measure, that means socially constructed based on the knowledge gathered by exploring as a mining, so exploratory and explanatory in nature, so it is subjective measure. In many qualitative research methodology book, you need to understand qualitative, you can understand that you know that qualitative hold the principle of exploratory or exploration. However, if your research is like purely qualitative or you have mixed method that um, bring uh, bigger weightage on the qualitative part, you should have explanatory part as well. So it's not, the nature is exploratory, but if you have pure qualitative research and also bigger weightage in the qualitative part, so 
you must also have the element of explanatory, not just explore and hang it there. You must be able to explain it. I will um, share this tomorrow on the finding and discussion. But if the weightage of quality, you have mixed method and the weightage of quali qualitative is uh, respectively small, so it's just merely for you to explore some variables or some elements before you're testing it, for example. So you can have only explanatory phase inside your data collection. Okay. That is the second assumption. While the third assumption is asiology, what values go into that knowledge? I can say that um, through my experience, through my experience reading many books in um, qualitative research methodology, um, many scholars like discussing this assumption um, um, ontology and epistemology. Um, you, but they do have three, uh, in, uh, including asiology, because asiology is a um, a bit challenging to discuss because it's about values that go into that knowledge, okay? Um, uh, because if it's more towards positivism, which whole, when you collect your data, is about objective measure, it's about number, it's about quantification, so it can be scientifically proved through some formula or value. While, on the other hand, value laden is assumption that um, your the, the, the way that you, you is part of the instrument to interpret the data based on your experience. So it's whole, it, it's not whole. Value laden means it's a value bias. For those, for, for the panel to not understand uh, to not fully understand what is meant by value bias, value bias is involved when it's involved humans. Of course, it have bias. So how you tackle bias, I will see. I will share with you later. So, uh, zoology, it um, you you need to be extra careful when you discuss it and explain it. Plus, sometimes. If people do not really understand the paradigm, they might like accusing, oh, you are biased, you are, this is just your, you interpret this, how you're going, how you can make sure it is correct or whatsoever. So it, there is, it, it is by scholars. Scholars say this, value led and is value bias. So <laughs> not to worry, it's okay. I, I don't think that. Like I say, la, um, um, usually in research grant, we're not really discussing philosophy. Usually panel don't want to look at, do not do not give so much emphasis on looking at the paradigm. Basically, they want to look at sampling, data collection, data analysis, that is what they do. But um, for, for research student like PhD student or master of philosophy, uh, having this discussion is uh, important compared to the research grant report writing. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is where it belongs, so obje objectivism, deductive, quantitative, because deductive is something, like I say, the process you acquire knowledge from the theory, so if you do quantitative, that means you are theory testing, while inductive is you process acquire knowledge from the data that you collected, so it's about theory building. Uh, however, uh, we need both actually because we start with literature with the theory before you collect data so in qualitative we need deductive and inductive as part of the process of acquiring knowledge this is when i i show you this this is the nature the principles as long as you understand the definition of what it's whole so you can apply to your research area okay so so this part is actually uh, uh, represent positivism uh, paradigm which um, hold a quantitative um, data type while the other paradigm uh, towards constructivism is holding a qualitative data type. Uh, you can have towards very extreme either constructivism or positivism. Okay. 
So, so you need to position yourself. Either you're going to have the extreme into the end or the extreme towards qualitative viewpoint or the extreme towards quantitative viewpoint or you can have like in the middle, 50-50. Mixed method, although uh, it, I, it, uh, Cresswell in his book wrote that ideally mixed method is having a fair amount of met percent is he does not call it percentage a fair amount of quantity and quality lah. Uh, so he said it ideally what what does it mean when people say ideally that means it's hard to achieve to have 50 50. for myself i think it is good that you can decide or put positioning yourself either it is more towards quantity or more towards quality so we will not better where you stand so you can have mixed method more towards quantity or mixed methods more toward quantity but it does not wrong if you want to have like fairly and equally equally in the middle okay so you're positioning yourself along this line so if you're not towards at the extreme so you will say like your research will be um, more towards interpersonalism carry more on social constructionism paradigm compared to positivism paradigm so that is how we discuss okay so why okay so it helped okay um why why we need to discuss about philosophy because it is how we develop the knowledge and the nature of the knowledge so basically cut short is like um, how you see things, how you view things, how you done things, how you do things, okay? So it's content assumptions. It's not from me, it's from Sounders. The three, like, uh, uh, the three things that I discussed earlier, this one, ontology, epistemology, and azeology, it's called assumption. Contains important assumption on how you view your reality. Okay, so therefore, therefore it helps you because if like, uh, all of us have undertake research, so we might have uh, experience we already have experience in undertake research so if for our student for phd candidate so it is outside his or her past experience in doing this so it help the student or candidate understand um why why quantity why quality it's not that uh when they undertake research oh what what are your research is quantity or quality it's not your quality or your quantitative research it's about your paradigm first okay So Mile and Huberman's also, like, this is 1994. Like, the, his book is very big. Huh? It's very thick. I don't know whether you can see it or not. <laughs> okay. So um, ontological, epistemological, azeology. Okay, so those are the things that I already summarized. So I'm just showing you the sources. Um, so if you um, still not clear, uh, fully understand, uh, I will show this like um, example of meeting two friends to discuss about ontology, epistemology, and azeology. So who is these two friends? One called Mr. Tangible, the other one called Mr. Feeling. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay, Mr. Tangible said, okay, both of, the, both of them actually are uh, investigating um, a factory, okay, a factory or a company, okay, in the company. So, Mr. Daniba said, look, I'm investigating the physical resource. Oh, what is the physical resource? The machine and everything lah, to produce the, the production, okay. So, Mr. Feeling said, okay, I'm also, will look into the production rate, but I'm going to investigating how, what is the attitude of the worker toward their manager, how they react, how they behave. Okay, fine. Then, uh, with, um, Mr. Tanjima said, okay, I believe the reality is external because uh, I'm only investigating the machine. I will look into the output, how the time uh, the time of the machine run, the output per day, peak time and everything. So I, I'm going to investigate the machine. So the reality is external. Okay. So Mr. Feeling said, oh, okay, I'm going to, I, I believe the reality is socially constructed because I'm going to interpret uh, their behavior, the attitude of the worker towards the manager or the stakeholder. Okay, Mr. Mr. Tangibles is going to look at the interpretation of the, the behavior or attitude. 
Okay, therefore, um, Mr. Tanjibo said, uh, because the way that I view about the reality, uh, the reality is external. I'm studying the physical resources. The machine is external. Ontologically, I'm carrying the realist view. Okay, so I'm going to investigate how many um, raw material inside, how many production out. So it is external. So it is um, real fact to everybody. Everybody can see us. It's not that we are, we look at something that not fact to everybody. It's like if you ask general question like uh, what is the color of sky? So everybody will say the color of sky is white. Okay, okay, but I'm going to study sky when it is in autumn season. So we have different color of sky. So we have different reality that we go at. Okay, so we construct the idea based on the reality. Okay, so we can see here, Mr. Finney said, um, because of the above view about the reality ontologically, I'm carrying the idealist view because I I, I, I keen to interpret the attitude of the worker towards their manager. Uh, so this is ontology definition, okay, so I'm going not going to read, so it is the same that I already explained, realism is experience external, idealism is unknowable reality, so this is by Sexton 2003. Okay, then, so that is ontology, so what is epistemology? So Mr. Ten, feeling, uh, sorry, Mr. Tangible said, I'm searching for general law, cause and effect to, to you know, to manufacture the product. So I use unbiased means in my investigation. I'm not involving on that machine whatsoever. I'm just monitoring, you know, calculating, reporting. Okay, fine. Mr. Feeling said, okay, I'm searching for explanation. How their feelings, how, what is their attitude to understand. I need to understand how the worker understand and interpret their world in the real world. Okay. So this is how you, you apply the discussion inside your write-up. If you want to have this inside your... Um, research grant right now. So, Mr. Tanjibar said, based on the way I see knowledge epistemology, epistemologically, I am carrying a positivist view. Okay. While, okay, because you, you see, um, Mr. Feeling over here want to interpret, okay, the situation. So, epistemologically, I carry an interpretivist view. So this is epistemology, a set of assumptions that acquire and accept knowledge about the world. Okay, a search for general laws, cause and effect relation by rational means, while interpretism is um, explanation of human action, understanding the way which is understood by individual. Good. And final assumption will be the azeology. So Mr. Tangible say, I position myself outside the research, making it free as far as possible. What have, whatever happened to me, does not <laughs> reflect the, the the data that does not affect the data that I'm going to collect. Okay, from any value that I might bring into the research. Okay, they are value free, value free. It is scientifically proven, systematically, scientifically tested. Well, Mr. Feeling said, I understand and I wonder the fact that my input to the investigation is part and partial, a crucialness, important that my input is important and appropriate. So my involvement to reflect the fact to the subject matter is subjective. So this is where bias, this is what bias means. Okay, as a logic is about value. So based on the way I position myself, Mr. Tanjibo said, I place myself value neutral because he does not inclusively involve like have relation to the data, okay? He is outside the data. While Mr. Feeling says, I place myself at value bias. So what does it mean by value bias? According to Sexton, value natural is value free and objective. Value bias is value laden. Laden to penuh isi lah, penuh explanation and everything. So research is value laden and subjective. What does it mean by bias? Bias is human involvement. You become the instrument to interpret the data, to collect the data. So how you must show that you already control the bias. How? By having a transparency of theory. When you're going to collect data, you already have a guide from your literature. From your literature, that means the literature that you have concluded as your scope, that you represent, you present it into your conceptual framework or theoretical framework. You're going to have the theory as a guide. 
not simply you collect the data by your own on your own like you you pick something from the sky no you know when you are going to collect data you develop the interview question you 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 refer to the previous scholar what are the thing that you should look at what are the thing you should investigate or examine so the bias was controlled by having a transparency of theory this letter will relate to the reliability and validity of research of qualitative research so value bias is not wrong value bias is involvement of human that means researcher as human interpret and collecting the data but however it is already controlled because you having a theoretical transparency you already show to them what are the basis of you conducting this research from where the theory or the element that you're going to investigate. So that is meant by value bias. So revisit, uh, so we cover the philosophy already, uh, approach and technique we will cover in other slide. Uh, so inductive, inductive is the process. Okay, inductive, deductive is the process of your acquired knowledge. So deductive is from theory, from the literature. Usually it's synonym or a line Usually, it is aligned with quantitative data because the basis of deduct sorry, uh, yeah, deductive basis is theory testing. Uh, can uh, usually uh, if quantitative, they have this uh, then body of knowledge they call specifically they call out as theory. In qualitative, we our body of knowledge we do have theory, but we don't. Sometimes we don't spell out is as it as theory, for example, sustainable development goal. We do not call just theory of sustainable development goal. But in quantitative, they do have specific knowledge called theory. For example, theory Maslow, theory of human behavior. Because inside that theory, they have variables as their component. So they need going to test the relationship between variables. That's why um, deductive have quantitative data because they want to test the relationship between variable as their hypothesis, okay? While on the other hand, inductive is process of acquiring knowledge, acquiring knowledge from the data that we have collected. So it is the nature of we doing things. Actually, we, because I say um, idealism, that means we build a theory. But for PhD candidate or for young researcher like me, not yet do like intensive research, I'm not entitled yet to come up with new theory. What we do is extension of some part of the theory or we develop an idea. We, we, we build an idea. So, but the basis is actually theory building. And then uh, this is just recap, uh, mixed method, mix method, multi and mono. I think you already know that. Uh, so we already covered the first part, which is the philosophy, which covered the three assumptions. We will move into the approach after this, and then uh, technique, quanti uh, either um, interview, focus group discussion, or observation, uh, if I'm not mistaken, tomorrow. Okay. So this is all my books. Uh, you can go into my social media platform. I have a lot, like 400 video on my YouTube. You can you can some in English, some in Malay, or you can have your student to visit it if it uh, gives some input to you. Okay, um, that's all. Before we have a break, I need to have the second part, the 1B slide. Uh, maybe, uh, so any question? I don't know whether, any question on from the participants? Uh, Linda, maybe you want to just go to the second slide, so before we have a quick break. Okay, okay. I hope at this point you um, have more clear understanding on what this paradigm all about. Yes, right. One B. Kalau tak ada soalan, then, then saya sambung sikit lah untuk yang ni sebelum kita break 10 minutes. Okay, so uh, <coughs> before I go to the qualitative uh, approach, so I would like to explain, uh, give 
a bit a brief uh, explanation on the qualitative homics method. Um, eh, stop presenting. <laughs> uh, Linda, can can I take control on this slide? Okay, sorry. <clears throat> okay, this is our already um um explain to you the mixed method what is the mixed method what is multi-method so if you had you want to have a better look at the article you can google this article um so basically uh if you have more than one that's mean you uh, already apply um you know you have a triangulation that's mean you have triangulate your data that's mean uh you might want it's not that um <laughs> It's not that everybody must have more than one method or more than one technique of data collection. So it depends. Um, so triangulation, what, what does it mean by triangulation? So it is known as complementary method, which we assume maybe if you have only interview might not that strong. So having another method, for example, questionnaire survey will make things more strong. So if you have more than one method, so you must make sure and you must be able to show that all this data from the method that you have um, structured, so maybe you have focus group discussion, interview, experiment, or question and survey, so all the data is finally later will converge to strengthen your result or your finding, okay? So you must be able to explain to you must be able to explain the must able to explain the what the connection or the usage on how it's complement each other and finally converge to become as one strong result okay uh, okay so this is all I take from Creswell like quantitative is predetermined instrument based qualitative is emerging method Emerging means you ideally uh, you construct it by looking at the appropriateness of method. So it is emerging. It's based on the needs on your research work. So it is emerging. Open-ended question. That means uh, the question is no answer, like interview, no answer. That's just called open-ended. So uh, it could be interview, observation, text, image analysis. If it's method, if mixed method, so it's from both lah, quantity and quality. So you can read more from Creswell. So in Creswell, you say quantitative is post-positivist or positivist. It could be experimental design such as method measuring attitude or behavior. Qualitative is constructivist. This is example given by Creswell. So some, uh, so according to Creswell, it might deploy ethnographic design, ethnographer. That means you observe, or also you can have qualitative emancipatory assumption. That means you narrative, you narrate your write up, open ending interviewing, or you have mixed method. That means you need to have more practical emerging methods so you you mix your data so it is pragmatic assumption it means method design uh, combined close and open-ended close mean the answer already given like questionnaire survey and uh you when you plan your research methodology chapter you must make sure which one come first is it no sequence or you start with qualitative first or start with quantitative first or quantitative first so you must make sure if you collect data first with quantitative, you must make sure you also analyze first with quantitative, okay? Or we can look at this explanation, for example. This is, actually you can come up with your own like emerging method, like emerging, what, what is it called? Emerging method or emerging methods. But if you think it, you can also um, um, adapt or adopt another scholars like for example Creswell uh, to help you strategize your data collection. For example, sequential explanatory is start with quantitative data first, followed by quality or explanatory, exploratory first. That's mean if quality at the end, that's mean you try to explain something. Uh, if quality at the beginning, that's mean you're going to explore some variables, some elements or some component before you testing it, followed by quantity. Or you can have sequential like this. Or you can have concurrent. 
quantity and quality, both together when you're going to collect data. While you pass your survey questionnaire, you're going to also observe the student, for example, okay? Or concurrent nested strategy. Okay, whatever it is to no detail, you need to read the books, lah, okay? But that's mean you need to clearly show the process. Otherwise, people do not understand. There is no blurry section in our research methodology because the transparency is the way part of the relate with our credible research report that involve reliability and validity. Okay, so in summary, there will be, you know, you can you can you can have a diagram like this to show your process, or you can simply write it. Okay, write it like structure it. We can see it clearly when you write your research methodology section or research methodology and also analysis section. So then we move to quickly to sampling in qualitative also already passed uh, then. Sampling in qualitative. So basically in qualitative, how we select our participant will be based on the specific characteristic, the specific knowledge that they have, the specific experience the more specific and rigid and detailed that you can list down, so the better, the meaningful, the better participant quality that you have. Like, for example, lah, you interview people uh, for job interview. So before people can apply for the job, you put all the listing of the candidate criteria. So same goes with the qualitative sampling. We go... We, we go for the purposive, okay? Specific correct characteristic, like um, um, patient of stage four that already have this disease, this cancer for more than five years, female, married, unmarried female with, um, uh, you know, uh, pernah minum alcohol ke, tak minum, people with, you know, Morocco people yang sehat, for example. So very specific characteristic, very specific knowledge, very specific. That is how we select our participant. The more specific, the more details is become our participant a very um apa nama? the quality is very good lah. So that's mean the participant should be able to give us a good information when we uh, interview them. Okay, so also what we can call it as purposeful sampling. There are a variety of purposeful sampling. Uh, I don't know all this. I just going to show. I just show to you the list. But for example, um, the snowball sampling. There are some research that we in a ideal in an ideal situation we should identify participant earlier before we collect data. There is no such thing as. Uh, I collect and then I don't know how many until it's what it's called huh? saturated then I stop no you must you should identify how many participants before you start collecting data however there are some cases that very sensitive things that you study that you cannot have open data information for example I'm studying about for example uh drug addict, uh, ex-drug addict, for example. So X, So I cannot get any information at the open data platform. I cannot go to the uh, dada, anti-dada kebangsaan to get, eh, boleh tak bagi uh, nama sekian, uh, bagi uh, info, tak boleh. So what I need to do is that I know that my neighbors is um, ex-drug addict, so I interview him, so I ask him, do you have a friend that can you know um, help me with this research so it's called snowball but not for all it's some situation that uh, involves sensitive issue uh, or you might not have open access database you know you cannot find you cannot identify them earlier so you can have snowball sampling okay so um, this is like popular question i had like how many doctor how many so i don't know how many there is this is just like blanket guideline, blanket guide. Uh, usually you can have like, if you have phenomenology, you have two. If you do research biography of maybe uh, Ton Mahadi, you have one people only for biography. So, but usually like I could say like 20 to 30, but it's not 
shouldn't exceed 60 interview for individual researcher. But if you have research grant, you have a big group, you can have more than 60 interviews. But for single researcher, it should not exceed 60 interviews, okay? Like, or like ethnography, phenology, all qualitative research, at least 15. It's not, you cannot have this number as blanket to put it in your, to decide this is your participant, you must look at your sampling criteria of the participant. The specific it becomes, the more lesser you will get. So this more richness of the data. So that will actually define or finalize the number of your participant. I think that's all for the first slide, first session. Okay. Uh, finish already? We should have like five minute break. Any question? Okay. I think lot, all of us is working, so we're juggling it with our work, daily work and attending this class. So any question? No question yet. Dr. Siti, salam. Okay, saya Umi. I have one question actually about the triangulation. Oh, triangulation. Okay. Let's say I want to object to it. Uh, 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 but then uh, after, uh, after, after uh, that, the, 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 the result uh, is not, uh, not good. good. So uh, after uh, that, I adopt uh, the uh, 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 qualitative. Is it considered triangulation? Saya tak apa dapat lah sebab putus putus. Apa soalan? Okay. Uh, uh, for example, like I'm working on one objective to get a primary data for this objective. Okay. And I'm adopting the 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 what the qualitative uh, data at first time, but then bila I dapat result tu, katalah the result is not that satisfy, uh, uh, is not towards my satisfaction. So I adopt a second uh, method uh, whereby I go for the statistical analysis. Uh, I adopt the qualitative uh, quantitative. Is that consider triangulation? Uh, okay, I, I, I say nak tanya soalan. Uh, I I need to ask question. At the at first, why you decide qualitative is better to achieve your original objective one? And then you decide, oh no, it's not good. Then you want to change into uh, quantitative. At the beginning, you should know whether it, you know, which data type is better to solve or achieve your objective. Why suddenly you change after? <laughs> I, no, I, I, I understand. Understand the scenario to understand better about the triangulation, uh, but maybe my example is not that good. <laughs> uh, the triangulation, I will explain a little, little bit about the triangulation because tadi terputus-putus, jadi I tak boleh dapat tangkap tadi the triangulation. Triangulation. Ah, triangulation tu, we assume, it is, we assuming, why, why we want to have more than one? So we assuming, satu method, one method might not, might have some weakness. So having another, we top up the weakness uh, with their strength lah, with the other method strength. Uh -huh. So Stop which is one each that other. Uh, uh -huh. So it means it, it can be work under one uh, particular objective lah kan? Kata like, say I would like to to have a, uh, to find out about uh, primary data for this objective. So I will adopt these two methods, am I right? You can, you can, but you can, but... Um, Usually, I will advise if you have different type of data to achieve on one objective, so you it's good to better separate it to different objective. Uh -huh. Otherwise, people get confusing. But but it's not like uh, totally wrong lah. You can. But I like it to better separate it. Alright. Okay. 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 Thank you, Doctor Siti. Uh Assalamualaikum. Should I open the um slide number three? Uh, number two, research yes. approach. Yes. Uh -huh. All right.
Buku saya pun ada dekat Shopee kalau nak beli boleh lah. Shopee murah sikit dia punya uh, apa nama? Postage. Uh. Okay, um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So we continue. This is uh, research approaches. Um, so first tadi kita dah tengok paradigm, research philosophy, we discuss about paradigm. So the second layer is about research approaches. So basically I would like, this is like 54 slides. The five approaches that uh, among uh, five tradition of approaches uh, in qualitative that or, or can be used um, like can be used with under qualitative with qualitative data this is the five approaches so it is very brief to show you a uh, very brief of each approach to give you understanding so therefore you can differentiate um, what are the strength between these approaches but if you decide to adopt later in your study you need to really um, read more lah on the respective approaches Okay, um, so so first we look into case study approach, uh, definition and condition. So case study approach, the one that I referring here is the one that uh, by Robert Kayin, the book of Robert Kayin. Usually we have Robert Kayin and Maryam. Case study approach ni, um, as far that I know, there are case study approach, Robert Kayin, Maryam. Case study... Um, case study Harvard Business School. That one is totally different from this. The other one, people are using case study not as approach, not as an approach. They simply take a, an organization or a company as a sample. So that is a research case, not case study approach. So you must be able to differentiate. If case study approach, if the researcher um, um, deploy the case study is approached this is the things that the element or the component that or the design that they uh, he or she should have but if they don't have this design that's mean they only take the company as a case as a research case as a sample only not following the approach so this uh, according to definition so investigate contemporary form phenomena in its real life context if the boundary between between the phenomena are not clearly evident, you can have case study approach. So what are the condition? If only the existing knowledge about the phenomena, maybe somebody have done it in other country, but in Malaysia, nobody have done it. Nobody means no documented process, no publication have been made in our country for maybe for our orang asli community, for, for some community, for some organization. Although it's being done in other countries, but not specifically in our country, so it's not properly evident, not clearly evident. We can consider it under not clearly evident, so you can have case study approach. What you can study under case study approach, you can study all. It's um, the 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 usage or the application of case study approach is um, a bit broad, so you can study in the structure, processes, or people. So whatever involves structure, whatever involves processes or people either one or combination or either two or three, you can have it under case study approach. Or you want to study, look at something that very complex or study something sensitive issue, you can also use case study approach. Uh, selection of cases. Okay, um, so inside case study, under case study approach, by Yin, Robert K. Yin, it has four, you need to choose between four type of design. It, it's either single versus multiple or holistic versus abandoned. So this is the four type of design. Single versus multiple or holistic versus abandoned. Single versus multiple. So usually, let me see what, what, what is the next. Okay, so I, I will wrap up. I, I will like briefly uh, discuss by looking at this table, this figure. So if According to Yin, it's better to have more than one case. That means it's better for both for multiple rather than single. But if the case that you are chose, you are chosen is specific, special, one of its kind, you better go for single. For example, you want to study about traumatic behavior of the family relative 
of the uh, MH370 victim. So it is very specific, very special, very unique. You need to go by single. If the thing that you investigate is not that unique, I mean, not unique, it's not that um, that special, that, that sensitive, it's, it's kind of data that um, that upper available uh, available not only from one sources there are so many sources for example you study about uh, patient in four in a uh, research university so there are five research universities so don't choose one choose five or choose three go for multiple if the data is available you go for more but if the data is very unique very special you should go for one lah. So maybe I want to uh, study about uh, the highest twin tower in Malaysia. So only one twin tower. Only one tower kat Malaysia ada. Maybe either Menara KL or KLCC. So I go for single. But I, if I study about mega infrastructure, there are a lot of mega infrastructure, bridges. So I need to have more than one case. So it's good to have more than, it's good to have multiple rather than single but if it's unique one of its kind go for single other than that you should go for multiple so what is between holistic and embedded so holistic if you look at the surface or if the things that you investigate only cover one element or one component that means you go by single unit of analysis so you go by holistic you will adopt holistic research uh, case study design if you have more than one unit of analysis, there are things, few components, there are processes with people, processes with structure. So you have multiple unit of analysis, so the design will fall under abandoned. So usually you have single abandoned, for example, or multiple abandoned of case study design. So you need to choose between these four case study design. So maybe the person or the researcher do not have this kind of design, so maybe uh, the way that he conducted or she conducted the research is basically basically the case as a research case as a simple sample for their study. Okay, already, already discussed this. <laughs> so if multiple, you're going to look at the literal and theoretical replication. Now, literal means you're going to predict a similar result between cases. So if um, um, sorry, um, this is easy. Ah, Did you take control of the slide? Yes. Um, sebab tak bergerak. <laughs> tak bergerak. I dah tergerak gerak kan dah sekarang dah set enam. Right, it's okay. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, please proceed. I don't know. What about the participant? Can you see the slide moving or just stagnant? Stagnant. Uh, stagnant. Uh, the first slide. Okay, so no answer. <laughs> just now not moving. Just now not moving, yeah. <clears throat> okay, now we're testing. Is it moving? No. Uh, ah. No. Still oh. at slide not six. Yeah, sekarang masih six. Now right. it's seven. Mm, uh, no. Let me unshare. Mm. And then share again. Not moving. Not moving. Not moving, okay. Not moving, okay. Right. <laughs> Let me let me share again. Okay, let's try it. Eh? So I, I, I am. <laughs> okay. Choose the city Garakan. Dah gerak dah. Saya dah gerakkan. Ah, okay. Bergerak. Ah, tapi dia kecil lah. Boleh besarkan balik tak macam tadi. Macam mana eh? Dekat skrin saya dia small. Hmm. Sepatutnya dia small lah. Maybe tadi um, control tu agaknya tak take control ke dia macam dia, dia, dia balik kepada present kepada saya. Okay, so okay lah. Okay, so um, what else? Okay, 
uh, when we choose multiple, we must, uh, according to Robert Cain, uh, the criteria of multiple cases must be the same lah. So kalau you choose a uh, research university, make sure all the five or three cases is research university. Uh, if I choose contractor, a company, so I must choose the same contractor type lah. So contractor class A, class A, class A, five contractor class A. So bank pembangunan. So which bank? Commercial bank. Okay, you choose the, if your criteria is commercial bank, so you must choose the same criteria for all your cases. So according to Yin, the criteria hold is the same criteria for all the cases according to yin so that's mean you are comparing uh, green apple and green apple but maybe diff one from i don't know one from australia one that's one okay lah uh, so the, the criteria is the same uh, bus and bus apa lagi car and car school high school uh, uh boarding school with boarding school that is according to yin but however there are other researcher but i couldn't find in books lah i find in journal paper they do comparative case study comparative case study means you compare like between green apple and red apple you cannot compare apple with banana lah that is totally wrong okay comparative like high performance school non performance school boleh lah uh, research university and non research university uh, so there is comparative case study but that is not according to in to other scholars also can be done comparative case study. If according to Yin, that's mean uh, you look at, you try to seek similarities between the cases. So although you might have contrast, contrasting result between cases, that might be a new theory, it's not new theory lah, a new idea that comes up, okay. Uh, okay, uh, so regardless of whatever approaches, you can have any data collection inside quantity, quality, interview, survey questionnaire, focus group discussion in under that case study approach. So no worries, although it is a case study approach, you can have any type of data collection. Uh, so this is like uh, the way that uh, Yin uh, developed their strategies, uh, the strategies of case study. Use multiple source of evidence. So Yin says goods for having multiple sources of evidence, but you must make sure all are converged. Dia menguatkan result tu. Dia bukan integrated tau. Converge ni dia saling menyokong. Kalau integrate dia gabung. Ini saling menyokong. Converge. Kalau dalam buku dia panggil convergent validity. Okay. Bukan dalam buku ni lah. Dalam buku um, other, other books is called convergent validity. So why in the yin they call pilot cases? Usually, fairly, usually kalau case tadi ni, we do not go like 10 cases, 15. That is big. Usually it's small cases, fairly small. So that's why we call pilot, fairly small cases. Because you want to do, why you take cases? Because you want to investigate further, in-depth, investigation. That's why you take case study. So number is not, having more is not the concern. It should be small, fairly small cases. So this is an example of the protocol. Inside in, they have written the, pro, he has written the protocol, but I just give example. If it's, I put in table, it will be like this. You start with your design, what is your selection of cases, it's called case screening and selection, uh, how you collect your data, how you analyze data. So just oh, a part of validity, so a part of reliability is having theoretical, sorry, transparency of procedures. So case study having you can, if you can show case study protocol, if you can, um, um, you know, uh, put it in a good uh, steps, good SOP or steps last step guideline, get very clear. So it's called transparency of procedures. So protocol is also procedures. So it's part of the reliability in research to achieve reliability in uh, qualitative research. So like, like, although, so it does not matter is it if, Case study approach is also can have interview, archive, observation, interview, survey questionnaire. You can have under case study approach. So this is, so later you can see that all are the same. So for other approaches, 
also the same. They use interview, they can use survey questionnaire, only the difference is how they approaching their phenomena. So this is like selecting the cases that suitable to represent their study, to, to represent the study. So analyze, okay, Yin, Yin say, okay, uh, if case study, you can use content analysis, cognitive mapping, force file. Okay, I will cover content analysis and cognitive mapping tomorrow. Force file, you can read like inside Yin. It's like you have some element to force in terms of the output. Uh, okay, so um, similarities, explanation. So in Yin, uh, if you do case study, if you do multiple, if you deploy multiple case study, you need to analyze within case and cross case as well. Also, Yin also discuss about triangulation uh, is part of the validity. Uh, this is like brief for each approach. Tomorrow, I will explain specifically on the validity and reliability. So reliability in Yin. In, in under case study approach, according to Yin, if I, if you have protocol and it's a very transparent, you have protocol. If you have protocol, that means somebody can replicate your work. They can replicate your steps, but the result may be not all the same, partially the same, uh, partially similar. So if somebody can replicate your work because if you have the protocol, it's very transparent. So you, therefore you already achieved the reliability. And also, um, um, any research should be able to generalize their finding. Partially, if not all, usually partially lah, because the foundation of what we do in research, we are actually referring to previous scholars. So usually the foundation of that research is something that can generalize. Only the specific thing related to our sample is tailor-made for our phenomena that we investigate. So usually the, the, the foundation of the finding or the principle of the finding is something that we can generalize so others can learn from our study, okay? Okay, so second is action research. Usually action research ni, um, um, teacher lah, uh, educator. Educator, teacher, they can use action research. Why? Because uh, action, what distinguish this research with other approach? Okay, that means you undertake action research because you want to improve your current situation. For example, you are a teacher, you teach, teach your student. For example, you are a special class teacher. You want to improve the way you're teaching through the new model that you want to try to apply. So you want to improve your current situation through your action. So it's called action research. Okay. If you can make changes, improve your own situation, so it then you can, you are applicable to do action research. So by definition, it's their own practice. Okay, participant as a mind their own practice to improve their own situation, not just interpreting. We passively collect data, interpret as outsiders. Action research, you involving, you're a part of it. So what? That is number one, the, the significant or the special, the significant criteria of action research. So you, you are part of it to improve your own situation. You can make change. Uh, second part, the, it has, you know, to cycle later, we look into that. Uh, so to explore, blah, blah, this is um, why conduct, lah. you can, to, to promote personal, this is like, um, General, eh? general with same with other research approach. So in action research, it consists of two cycles. Knowledge, knowledge is generated through action and for action. That means you are try and adjust. So you have come up with something that you get from theory, you 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 get from the literature, you got from theory. This is are the things that you should do in order to improve the situation. So you try, you do it. And then 
you get feedback you do again so it consists of two cycle so you learn from the first cycle so that's why knowledge is generated through action and for action so it has two cycles so this is the second significant thing or criteria about action research first if you can improve your own situation you are empowered to make changes to improve the situation it involves two cycles so you can you are entitled to do action research so you can answer lah you can you can ask your question can you are you focused on your own work you are empowered to make changes so if your student like I, I want to do research action research are you part of the community are you part of the system no you are outsiders so usually they not empowered they cannot make changes they are not part of the the phenomena so if you're not empowered you do not have um uh, uh, you know you tak ada kuasa lah uh, untuk change thing uh, the improvement is impossible so you shouldn't be doing action research lah uh, that's why uh, usually uh, education uh, education learner teacher educator they do action research they call descriptive or quasi experimental okay i'm i'm no, I, I just give you a brief. Eh? I'm not really know about action research, but I know what is different between other other approach. Okay, so uh, same same with other approach lah. Problem formulation, data collection. I don't want to repeat the same thing lah. Eh? All all our approach have those component. So the the main uh, the main question that you need to understand, you need to answer. What is actually the things that you do? What changes occur? Because it has to cycle. Is there any relationship between the changes? Uh, everything you every time you die, who is affected? Uh, so question to ask: Who is the possible cause? What are the same? So when you look at this, actually, you can use this as part of your finding because when we write, when we write our finding. We don't want, we shouldn't write something generic. We should some write something very specific. Who are affected? Who going to benefit? It's not only just government sector, industry. Uh, Ministry of Health Department of Health. So very specific. Who are the beneficiaries, for example. So it, it's also applicable in our broad uh, uh, risk writing of the findings. So data analysis, making sense of the information. So same lah, okay, you, you analyze your data. So reporting is a bit different. So you need to, you need to report what is your first, when you do the first cycle, what is your finding? And you need to inviting others. It's good to invite others to learn from your practice. So, and then you, in order for you to improve for the second cycle, okay. So reporting result is about understanding the changes. You can also, if you are creative enough, you can also combine case study with action research. So you first selected any organization, any uh, company, any school or whatsoever as your case, but you conduct action research under that selected case study. So if you're creative enough, you can, innovative enough, you can combine two approach. If you combine, that means your design also need to show this integration of these two approach, lah, the case study and also action research. So therefore, if action research, you see two cycle is already multiple unit of analysis. So single abandoned case study. So the third one is ethnography. So ethno is nation or people. Graphia is writing. So you you do some write up, a proper write up about some people in the nation in the some some area lah in the nation. So basically ethnography ni you study people in naturally occurring setting. Their natural setting. For example, Aborigines, orang asli. Uh, Orang kelainan upaya, they are naturally occurring setting. So there is, it looks like the same, but each approach have very thin line specific definition of their approaches lah. Okay, of its approach. People in naturally occurring setting. Kalau tadi tu real life context, 
It looks like the same, but it's not. <laughs> okay. You are meant to capture their ordinary activity. Orang kurang upaya, their ordinary, their daily activities. Orang asli, their daily activities. Pesakit cancer stage 4, their daily activities. You, you, you choose one community or one group to study their ordinary activities, okay? Involving the researcher participating directly, uh, directly in the setting, if not also the activity in order to collect data lah, okay? Okay. <coughs> So, your your role nanti overt role ke, covered role ke, paper daily life, extended period of time, kan? Dia macam ni tau. In order for you to understand their daily life, it is like longitudinal tau. Long, long, it's not like you go, one time collect data, you already understand how they behave, how they eat, how they how they react after having chemo, you need to spend a fair amount of time in order to understand their daily activities. So different. So you need to understand whether which which approach is um, suitable for you. Listening to what you say, sometimes you part of it, you become them, you 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 jadi, you tukar baju jadi orang asli for example. Boleh. So that is the role. Either you uh, detach or detach or attach. Until later we will look. Okay, people action are study in everyday context. Okay, so data, any lah, observation, interview, documented, archive, photo, video, anything can be. So it's, it's same with any other approach. Usually it is unstructured lah. When I say unstructured, that means usually it is qualitative data. Uh, and also few cases and very small because you want to in-depth understanding on their daily life so we do not go like so many tempat lah, uh, fairly small scale. Okay, so this is the design. Okay. Mana semalam saya conteng? To discuss about, okay, open setting and close setting, over on and covered on. Uh, I think ada dekat sebelah. Okay, <laughs> the setting of your ethnography, okay, open is public setting, no barriers to entry, no barriers to enter. So open setting, high crime community, tak ada. Close setting, you cannot go into the, the phenomena, UK, unless you have access lah, so that is close setting. Uh, private. Uh, harder to access. Uh, open is easy to access. Uh, so this is open setting. High community. Glasgow gang. Uh, kalau macam policeman, you tak boleh access. That is close setting. Okay. What is overt role and covered role? Overt involve the researcher declaring to their participant what they are doing. Uh, covered, they don't know. They don't know you are researching them. So that is covered role. So you need to, you need to choose between these four types of design. You are overt role in closed setting, overt role in open setting, covered role in open setting, which one? Same like the case study approach lah. Okay. So the first important thing you need to understand, daily life of certain community that you want study in deep. It's not just go one time collect data. It doesn't work that way. So this, your, the researcher is ethnographer. What is your role? Eh, kenapa dia tak keluar? Dia ada line-line ni. -line. Uh, involvement eh. Compete, compete. You are participant or participant as observer or observer and participant. So involvement or detach. Like detach is outside lah. You only observe. Uh, okay. Complete fully functioning member of society. The role uh, is the same as complete participant but um, they're aware of a status of researcher. Observer, researcher is mainly an interviewer. Some observation but little involved. Complete observer, dia tak bercakap ni. Outside, dia observe saja. Uh, detach lah, this one detach. This is involved, detach. So you need to identify your role as well as ethnographer. Okay, this is same lah. Uh, observation, interview, same with any other research approach. This is collect data collection. Okay, uh, so tadi uh, case study, action research, 
ethnography now grounded theory. Uh, so grounded theory also uh, uh, applicable can be used with qualitative data. So qualitative research process to generate theory from data. So a qualitative research process to generate theory from data. That means what is important is how the analysis process took place. Uh, not the that the important of grounded can the theory how you can ground the theory you finally grounded that theory is the process of you analyze that showing significantly finally the information being grounded as a theory uh, so the process of analysis is a significant thing to show so to generate theory where little is already known, uh, can theory become grounded via systematic procedure. Uh, itu tadi, relating the, relating the theory back to the original data. So theory evolved during the research process itself because you explore, because you have qualitative data, that's mean you exploration. Theory is product continuous interplay between data collection and analysis. Okay. So the significant is, Theory becomes grounded via systematic procedure. So the systematic procedure, procedure under grounded theory, you need to show and prove how those information later being grounded as a theory. Okay. So there are uh, the the popular one is uh, by Glaser and Strauss lah, uh, and they have uh, lots of scholars lah. Eh? Okay. Uh, basic principle, what I mean, if you do grounded theory, you must, this is the main player, lah, the scholars in grounded theory. So theoretical sampling, coding procedures, uh, this is the procedure. The, 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 the scholars emphasize on the analysis procedures. This is coding procedures called for analysis process, analysis data. Okay, first it say open running, open coding, running the data open. Then you build a concept indicator if it's being... Uh, so after you do open coding, then only you come up with SEL coding uh, analysis done around one category. Why why it's called grounded theory? Because it's a it it's supposed to mean as an approach to find new theory. It's not that new theory, new variables under some theory. Okay. And some theory new variables later those variables will be going tested by us by the same research or any other research now so that's called the intention and the theory is to identify to identify new variables okay so as you coding so therefore in order for you to to highlight to see to seek the information but to identify the variables after the open coding you need to do agile coding so this is in details i don't know how it's done lah. so in general you need to look at the 6c uh, the contingencies the, the, uh, so if you decide that you want to do grounded theory you should learn read more lah in the grounded theory book my intention just to give you understanding in brief what is the difference between all the approaches uh, kalau nak study semua satu-satu, banyak sangat, tak tahu habis nanti. Ha. Okay, so I just give you as a brief. After agile coding, we go for selective coding. So this is the procedure lah under. So the analysis procedure play a main role uh, for before the theory can be grounded. That means the variables can be grounded as part of the theory. Okay, so in brief, it looks like this lah. Field work open coding, as a coding, finally selective coding before it's been grounded as that variables for that particular theory. Okay, habis. Finish on the grounded. We move to the phenomenology research approach. Okay. To describe a life experience. Okay. Apa tadi? Uh, recap case study. To, real, to study real life contract where evident is uh, where it's not clearly evident not not proper do not 
do not have a proper documentation on that, not clearly evident. Number two is what? Action research. Action is distinguishing with other any other research approach lah. You can make changes to your action. Okay, improve. Uh, you can make changes through your action and improve it to for the next, to propose it for the next action. Third is the ethnography. So ethnography, you choose some community in some area, you study them, their daily life activities. So this one, uh, so, the, the, uh, so that is ethnography. The other one just now is um, what? Grounded theory. Uh, so grounded theory means you want to uh, uh, explore the potential variables that might have through qualitative data. So therefore, the analysis procedures are the main element before you can ground the kind of variables under that particular theory. The final is the phenomenology is to describe a life experience. It looks like the same, like uh, real life contract daily, but all approach have their significant terms of definition. Okay. Phenomenological research is to describe a life experience. So usually the participant is the actor. We perceive it them as an actor in that, that particular situation. It's more deep. It's more deep. It's more close the way that you study them, study the actor. We do not call them as participant. We call them as an actor that we investigate. So you can have variety of data collection method. Lah. Interview, discussion, you observe. Maybe you interview, be interview before having chemo, interview after having chemo, interview with the present of the family member interview without the present of family member you might get the different answer why well, you have different answer when you have family member i don't want my family member to be uh, worried so if they are not here this is what i really feel for example okay so so the the key is to describe a life experience which later you should be able, you should able to bracketing, which I'm capture the experience. It's called bracketing lah under phenomenology. You should be able to bracketing the experience, study the experience, capture the essence of the experience by bracketing uh, to usual way of proceeding. Yeah? So it's called uh, paradigm is subjectivity. Uh, usually, a this approach, they already highlight what are the, some approaches, they inclusively uh, highlight or, or, you know, uh, define their paradigm. Okay. It's paradigm. Okay, so uh, pure phenomenological research six, describe rather than explain. Okay, we do not explain. It's like, it, it could be so narrative, like, when you you describe how they undergo the chemo, the process before, the process after, I'm just giving example. So you because usually nursing and psychology uh, use adopt phenomenological approach. That's why I I I I, I uh, take example uh, cancer patient uh, undergo chemotherapy for example. So you totally describe. So when you describe the macam tulis, it's like you tulis novella without going to the Please, you can cry, you read the novel, you can feel happy. So, because you look at the person as an actor, so you describe details. It's more like narrative, right up, okay? Effective at bringing to the fore the experience and perception of the individual from their own perspective and therefore the challenging structural or normative assumption. Uh, so, so therefore, you know, a lot of subjective data, jotting down, recording video or voice or whatsoever need to be analyzed. It is all messy. It's all unstructured data. So it is a bit challenging. So challenging lah. But however, if you do like the research that you do, nothing is challenging lah. Because people must be so interested kan, to do something that they keen to know. Although it looks like very unstructured and messy, like you observe, sometimes you observe 
uh, you know, um, there are phase, phases, stages that you observe. You cannot like, although you have observation, you must um, um, clearly put timetable, uh, you know, uh, put structure your, your observation time. When, how many, uh, predictably, I don't know. So, so you need to really uh, list, structure it properly. Okay, so summary taken from Creswell's book, Phenomenology. Uh, he said, um, nursing, sociology, nursing. Uh, so most of it, sociology and nursing, psychology. Social science, Denzel and Nikon. Denzel and Nikon, um, uh, scholars in qualitative, but uh, his book is taken from many authors. Like his, this is the edited book. Uh, he edited the book, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, but most of, uh, research area that involve phenomenology is nursing, sociology, nursing, uh, psychology lah. Uh, okay. Other than that, social science can also. Uh, so, what is the, the the focus? Okay, dimension, the tradition, the essence of experience about the phenomena. You're going to study the, the participant as an act actor to bracketing their experience. Uh, data collection long, okay, really in depth. It can uh, as minimum as two person only. Uh, data analysis more sama lah. Uh, you can also do content analysis later. I will show you about content analysis. Content analysis as part of the data collection technique. Uh, you can uh, adopt it. Other approach yang uh, that we learn today. Uh, however, when the writing comes down, it's about narrative form description of the essence of the experience okay um, so phenomenology is about multiple individual who have experienced the phenomena the criteria when you choose your actor or your participant or is it can be as minimum as two up to ten people okay so because it is very intense very deep huh? so this is all from Creswell uh, bracketing huh? bracketing one experience that is the keyword huh? So, uh, summary, to recap, uh, differentiate among these five approaches. This is description, investigating a contemporary phenomena in its real life context, action research, uh, daily life activities, grounded theory, generate theory from data through via systematic procedures, ethnography, uh, study people, Oh, tadi sila, action research if through action. Ethnography, study people in their daily life setting. Phenomenology, how the perceived phenomena by the actors. So the design is also different, the focus is also different. So as long as you understand between these three, uh, these all five is difference between each other. What is the difference between these five? You should be okay lah to, to adopt. If you want to adopt any one of it, you need to learn more lah. Uh, okay, thank you. That's all for approaches. Thank you. So we have another last slide. Uh, we supposed to have one one day bank here. I said no lah, just half day lah. Uh, I cannot mm -hmm. go one one day direct. Anyone, anyone have question? any question? If if don't have, I don't know. You can have a break, or we can continue. Uh, it's up to you. If we can continue, we can uh, finish early for today's session. Total city. Total city. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Questionnaires. Questionnaires. That it it uh, uh, it Kalau question eh, uh, it, I think it that will be in this our third slide. Oh, okay. but it is question is okay. Um, one uh, this five tradition is actually fall under the one that are among qualitative scholars, mm -hmm. qualitative mm -hmm. methodology. But we can have survey approach. Survey can be an approach as well. Survey. As an approach, usually uh, deployed by um, by researcher under marketing when they want to look uh, to study the consumer behavior. 
they study, they use survey approach because under survey approach, you can have survey, uh, questionnaire survey, and you can have interview survey. Uh, why? Uh, but survey approach usually it it hold more on quantitative data, although it can have interview survey under that survey approach. But the weightage is more on quantitative because in order for you to understand the market consumer behavior, you need to cover a large population. So mm -hmm. therefore, you need to do survey questionnaire first. Uh, not first. Survey questionnaire is the bigger weightage under the survey approach because. In order to do on the market, you need to cover the vast amount of population. Then you can also have the interview as part of the survey. You can have a small group. Maybe you already know um, uh, the customer, the consumer want this. You already do the questionnaire. This is the product, the pilot product, the initial initial product. So you ask one group of people to look at the product to give the uh, um, uh, apple extra opinion on that particular product you can have interview under survey approach however if you're not deploying a survey approach you can have interview as data collection methods it's not under survey okay so uh so, uh, if like uh let's say i do a survey a questionnaire survey on maybe 20 people and then i go really pick that one maybe Some kalau uh, maybe kalau it's not that for marketing ataupun not for consumer maybe it's just like survey questionnaire technique saja bukan survey approach. Hmm okay uh. alright so uh, ada tak minimum minimum interviewee untuk untuk interview ada ada rules macam tu ke? Untuk untuk interview ke? Ah yes kalau untuk uh, participants how many participant minimum kena ada? Uh, you're not answer. You're not uh, asking for the how many respondent for questionnaire, kan? Sebab questionnaire ah, yes, lain. Yes, yes. That one yeah. dia ada calculation uh, table formulation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For qualitative tadi rasa dah tunjuk dah. I already show um, uh, apa tadi range. Okay. Slide nombor dua ke? I tak ingat tadi. Kat sini ke slide nombor dua? Yang yeah, uh, untuk case study ke or, or untuk apa lah? Okay. Tak tak. Uh, uh, yang ada range 20 between 30. I think that uh, is the second okay. slide. Okay. Ah, uh, that is range as a guide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Range as a guide. It can be as low as two, but two usually phenomenology. Usually like 15 oh. to 30, but the exact number will be defined, will be finalized. The exact number of participants will be finalized through the specific criteria of you selecting your participants. Okay, okay. True, true criteria, I see. Yeah, as lagi specific, lagi, you know, like kita interview orang lah, kita dah bagi criteria. So, you nak, you nak apply this job, this is the criteria. Kalau you not fit into the criteria, not you not entitled lah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so, okay. So, the range is only the guide. Alright, okay. Thank you, Dr. Siti. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lim. Okay, so you want to have break or you want to continue? I, I can continue. I can have break, whatever. Five minutes break is fine. Tak dengar. Nak break? Nak break? Okay, five minutes. Ten minutes. Okay lah, kita break. Five okay. minutes boleh? Boleh. 11, sekarang 11, 11, so 11, 16 lah. We'll be back here. Okay, um, so under this slide, uh, I will discuss about uh, how you can uh, construct or develop your interview question and also I think at the end I will cover a bit on the focus group and observation if I'm not mistaken eh, under this topic although the punya tajuk is um, interview question development so however I also covered the focus group discussion and observation. Um, okay dah. Okay dah. Okay. Hmm.
Okay, rasanya betul tu. Ah, okay. Um, okay. So, uh, under interview, when you want to develop uh, or uh, develop interview instrument, you can have three type lah. Like either unstructured interview, semi-structured or structured. So, what is this uh, between the difference between this unstructured, semi-structured and structured? So, unstructured is um, when you want participant to uh, free to say or discuss whatever they like about the broad topic. When uh, usually it's um, more on generic question, that's why um, discuss broadly, freely on a something broad topic. So, it usually the question um, more like generic question. Uh, it is also appropriate for pilot work, for pilot study work, for exploratory research. That's mean uh, if you need, if you have, if your study is about mixed method, using mixed method approach, mixed method research design, sorry, mixed method research design. So you have uh, quantitative or experiment, but you want to have maybe to explore, to get some idea on something that's mean exploratory work, you can have also uh, unstructured interview question for your explanatory work, exploratory works. So just to explore a few things, uh, to explore a few things, you can have unstructured as well. For emergent research, that's mean um, maybe previously it's not uh, specifically or properly, it's not, it's not, specifically properly investigated investigated by others so you it is emergent emergent topic so you can also have unstructured because it's more generic since it might not having some base earlier so it is emerging so you might want to have unstructured interview question if the topic is very sensitive you go for unstructured also because it's not too heavy to ask your participants. Usually for qualitative, we call our, our apa ni, kita punya participant ni, atau res, in qualitative, we call it as participant. In quantitative, we call them respondent, okay? But in uh, under phenomenology, we call them actor. Uh, the participant is called or identified as actor. Uh, to deal with diverse group, okay? There is a lot of group, so it's good to have generic question also. Generic question usually unstructured and also to, to, to help to develop more structured interview. So maybe you only have a little knowledge about that particular topic or issue. So you want to have a basic foundation before you develop a more structured interview, you also might have unstructured interview question uh, at the beginning, okay? So this is the example of unstructured. So the, usually uh, unstructured is generic question and they don't, do not belong to certain category of question. Uh, if it's being categorized, usually it's structured or semi-structured. If it's not categorized, it's a very generic question, we, uh, it is known as unstructured interview question. So what is your view? What are the type? What is the range? So generic question, just to initiate before we go further, like preparing a semi-structured interview or the emerging topic, the sensitive issue, so you can have unstructured interview question, like emerging exploration only, so you can have unstructured. Uh, also, I have a lot of questions people asking about, Dr. I, I conduct survey questionnaire, but at the end of each section, I have like any opinion, does it consider as interview? No, it's it's not an interview, it's still um it's not interview, it's still part of the survey questionnaire, it's just like additional information that you bring in. It's not it's not a qualitative data. Qualitative data must have a series of questions as low as unstructured. It's not that any opinion that's not considered as. It is open and the question, but it's not part of the uh, appropriate technique under interview or under qualitative data. 
Uh, so that is unstructured. And then we have structured and semi-structured. Structured and semi-structured is, is the same. It The question are uh, developed under certain categories or phase or certain process. Okay? Certain categories, certain process or certain concept that belong under different categories. So it is the same, semi-structured and unstructured. And, and, uh, and structured. The only difference is structure must follow a sequence, a specific sequence. Uh, Semi-structured is a bit flexible, but structure, there's a rule. So you must follow a sequence, specific sequence. sequence. So example. Example of structured interview. Okay. Structure, structure, structures pula. Structured question eh, for initial screening of COVID-19 passion. Have you involved with any event or gathering? If you have, please explain where, when, and how many. If no, please go to question three. So it's being instructed to answer the series of questions according to the sequence. So this is structured. So maybe first is this section, maybe um, um, potential contact of getting COVID uh, under the category of first contact of COVID-19, for example. What I mean is structured or semi-structured, they have a category of question. Dia ada anak-anak dia. Dia ada sub-question sub under that particular main categories. Uh, same goes with survey question. Eh? Usually, we, usually uh, you, you, you develop your survey questionnaire. Questionnaire as instrument, you put it under certain phase, certain category, certain group. You do not put like 40 questions under one um, big listing of survey questionnaire. If you have that, maybe not more than 10 or 15 list of questionnaire. Otherwise, it should be grouped into their teams lah. Teams ke, group ke, category ke, component ke. Uh. Okay, so usually uh, we have um, demographic background. Okay, that's mean uh, their um, personal information uh, and then uh, usually the first uh, section of question is like warming up question to get to get their broad opinion on something okay uh, social purpose this is example social purpose knowledge so you are something related to social purpose you are something related to community awareness so semi-structured and structured that means it's a group of question but structured you must follow the sequence uh, you cannot answer like uh, you if if not necessary necessary for you to have a question that need to follow a sequence, it's good to have semi-structured. Why? Because interview, it is like a natural setting. So it's hard for you to control when people talk. Usually they, you ask one question, sometimes if for talkative people or very friendly, they like, they already answer all the question, for example. So semi-structured is more flexible. If it's not necessary for you to, if it's not necessary for you to take the structure, go for semi-structured. But if it's must for you to follow a certain sequence, you need to have a structured interview question. So the, the challenge is um, people tell you what they think you want to hear or they might give you something that opposite from what they want, you want to hear. Or maybe they don't tell you the truth. It's not that they are lying. It is your role to interpret what does it mean, okay? For example, like, that's why if interview, it is good to have face-to-face -face interview so you can see their face ex expression, their body language. Either they say they agree, but the intonation, the all this will be significant for you to interpret. That's why you can't just write a summary point when you interview people. That's why you need to fully write down the transcript. That's why you need to record or, or uh, either voice recording or video recording because you need you transcript mean word by word. Okay, you cannot summarize or point, wrote it down in point form. 
it doesn't work that way because if you do it that way you might lose some important point while you do the interview while the conversations take place because later when you look at the transcript you might identify something important as well that's why transcript is a raw word by word conversation you need to put down so that is transcript it's not summarize the point it doesn't work that way in qualitative data so all must be raw material okay so the art of interview um um, um like i say lah, you cannot control um how people react to your question so uh, sometimes you ask one question they already uh, answer all the questions so don't repeat so the interview question actually is just a guide for you so if the people your participant already asked the answer the question you just move to the one so is it okay to rearrange uh, the what their conver the conversation according to the section of the interview the answer yes you can you can copy paste you know cut paste arrange although like it's not when when it's being uh, the interview being conducted it might not it is messy so when you want to do the transcript you can uh, copy the uh, conversation part according to the question lah the answer put into the question the answer put into the question that is not wrong because you're not changing anything you just take oh this thing it should be in this question three this thing should be in question four answer for question four uh, so that is okay you're not changing anything avoid long question uh avoid two question in one question what do you think about costing and performance they cannot they might answer only costing or performance so avoid long question avoid two question avoid double meaning okay so clarity also this is like confusing question do you favor smaller classes in larger room Whoa, what is this okay larger room smaller classes they do not understand when you were young when were my so young when i still young now uh, the uncle say yeah. okay so when you were in University, when you at high school, which part of young? Okay. Taping interview, phone interview. Okay, so so if phone interview, there is no body language and face expression that you can um, capture. Okay. Uh, if you have phone interview. So uh, taping, you can, you need to ask for the permission. Lah. Uh, if by words that they are not giving you permission to taping your interview, try at your best. Try at your best. Write down everything. Uh, write down everything. <laughs> you might lose some information, but try at your best. But it always good to tape the interview. Uh, so many. Uh, okay. All okay. So make any response seems okay. Um, sometimes we should have two different set of questions under the same things that we investigate for example uh, like i show you in the beginning mr mr feeling want to study about uh, the perceived behavior or attitude between the worker and the manager so the question the interview question for manager are different set of interview question for the worker the content is the same. The way that you construct the question will be different. You will ask about like, um, I don't know, work performance, or maybe you want to ask about uh, motivation or commitment from uh, the employer or the employee. Uh, so you ask the same content, but the questions are different for the manager or the worker. So the, the set of questions different from two type of group. But the content, the context is the same lah. The content or the content is the unit of analysis that you're going to investigate is the same. Uh, whatever the element that you put inside your theoretical framework or conceptual framework. What else? Uh, okay, uh, avoid long question. Eh, kenapa macam uri lah? Okay. Okay, precision. Okay, were you? Well, I think I, I got the same slide. Okay, sorry. 
avoid uh, bias you are proposing the without intention not intentionally you are proposing them to to get into your idea so this is bias how fast was the car going when it smashed into the barrier not necessarily uh, when car involved with accident not necessarily is going fast maybe because the driver fall asleep not even fast for example okay so this is just some example lah, okay uh, some people say x some people say y okay how do you say it? what is your opinion you can have probes uh, to clarify things uh, and to, to get encouragement, maybe they do not understand and they do not have an idea, they're a bit shy, or you can you can have probes, but probes also need to be neutral. I think I have some um, example, okay? So always keep probes neutral. Um, it's like, you know, when you do the transcript, uh, the, the detailing should come in la, like, the person not answering silent for five seconds like mm, yes uh, mm, uh, you need to put that inside your transcript as well because those sometimes it gives some info according to Gordon if they did not break the silent between two to nine seconds or if they do not answer your question after 15 seconds they might they don't want to answer it or you can repeat it for the second time but don't push it though lah after the second time that will be uh, through my experience that will be the limit lah maximum you can try second time and then if they don't give, when, give you the answer they might that means they don't want to answer the question lah okay so this is example I take from this paper lah which I find out in the research gate Okay, example of question, example of probing, would you prefer your experience of sleeping? Could you explain that further? You probe. Uh, did you receive any medical in prison? Like illness, treatment, medication. Uh, so this is uh, some example of probe or prom. Like it is probe lah to further clarify things, okay? To help you um, uh, getting, uh, to help the participant uh, give, you know, understand the question better. So this is the reference for the uh, interview. Okay, now we move to observation. Uh, observation is, uh, observation usually it's more on qualitative research technique. However, it can also be quantitative. It's like macam, um, naturally, observation is for qualitative research. Uh, however, however, people in quantitative also can use observation. Naturally, it is qualitative. What I mean is, if you do observation, either quantity or quality, you should have list of observation. If you have list observation as checklist that you tick, 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 observe patient one, tick, 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 so that is quantification. So that's become observation quantitative data. Observation qualitative is you jotting down, you writing, you describe. Oh, the patient seems restless after five minutes taking the vaccine COVID-19 after 10 minutes. So you jotting down, so that is qualitative. If you just tick, tick, tick and quantify, that is observation quantitative. Okay. So observation can be quantitative or qualitative. So you must be clear which one are you doing. Is it just ticking? Tick the list or you jotting down based on the list that you have provided. Because you must have something in order to observe. That means what you're going to observe uh, five minutes after the COVID-19, the, having the vaccine, 10 minutes after. Uh, uh, observe how the, the sleep pattern for the first 15 minutes. So you must have a list 
as a guide for you to observe or the component of observation. Uh, using observation data is best when, when, okay, when you need to gather sensitive information, which you don't trust your participant will do it on this. Yeah. Sometimes, although you, you do interview, you undertake interview, you said some, sometimes students say to me, doctor, I think the, the participant is lying to me. Are you sure? It's your responsibility. It's your job to interpret. What does it mean? Because he keeps saying that, you know, I agree, but you know lah, you know, it is lots of problem, lots of issue. That's mean he doesn't agree lah. It is your job to interpret what does it mean through all the information that he or she gave you. Okay. Uh, okay, the, the topic is new. You can also do um, observation. Uh, net, you, you really want to look at natural setting, you can go... Uh, in, co in a control setting, for example, like uh, you put somebody in a sleeping room, you want to observe how many times they move, they wake up or whatever. So that is that is control setting. You can also do observation. You put some uh, children uh, to play, that is control setting in the playroom. So it's called control setting. Uh, when you need to have more specific information, uh, so uh, more complete, uh, to formulate, uh, to, you want to have observation in order for you to formulate more com more structured or more accurate survey or interview, for example, you can have observation as well. Just uh, get your current is there. Okay, okay. This is um, when it is applied. Lah. It can be applicable to this following situation. So, jotting and memoing. So, this is part of the observation of qualitative. Eh? Uh, you cannot... Seem like interview lah. You cannot like summarize based on twenty form. It should be jotting. Eh, that is raw data. When you summarize, you put in point form. You already, without you knowing it, you already do the analysis. That means you already summarize things. Uh, you shouldn't do that. Uh, memos is a written idea. Okay, you memoing, uh, jotting down. They are not by researcher to herself or about some hypothesis or some category or some whatever lah that you're going to observe. Uh, so it is more qualitative research process and its credibility. Uh, why use memo? Because this is data. Uh, uh, it is important when later you want to analyze the the raw raw data. Uh. Uh, the researcher, you can use uh, you can use observation for your ethnography or grounded theory, for case study also, any, any, any approach lah you can use. So, begin to fit the piece of puzzle together blah, blah, blah. Okay, need this one you can read yourself. Uh, initial memo letter appear rather naive. Okay, so that means you are um, jotting down um, or memoing. Uh, jotting down or memoing. Um, so no rules, no grammar. It is broken, a uh, broken everyday uh, conversation uh, uh, term. If you interview people, say in a uh, in uh, apa, a conversation took place in Malay language or mixed language or in Chinese or Indian language. However, your 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 report is in English. At your best, translate broken translation without changing the meaning, not putting into grammar ke, proofread ke, no. Using broken English to translate at your best, represent the same information or the same quotation under the conversation itself, okay? Not, not translate it using good English, no, you cannot. It's just everyday conversation uh, writing term, okay? What else? No wrong or tak ada, tak ada. There is no right, right way of, you have your, you can have your own style of writing. Uh, example, okay. So this is memoing lah. Some, some call it memoing, some call it uh, jotting. Okay, so, uh, so you will have your own uh, style lah, style of freedom. There is, no no specific ways to do it but 
your checklist guideline or your component, your element will be a guide for you to jotting down everything lah. It's not that like, it might be unstructured and messy, but you still have the list to jotting according to the um, element or category or the list. Okay. Jotting breakdowns, observation into their most element part and capture the weight of each idea. Transcript, not taking, coding. Uh, so this is a lot of inf a lot of data collection can be take lah. Uh, coding ni later lah kita uh, learn for how to analyze. Example of handwriting, jotting down notes. John climb to the top of okay. yellow list. Uh, you can, you know, because when you observe, sometimes it's very quick gun. You don't have time to put like very proper manner. So you can be like this also. Why doctor can, this is evident of your the raw data. So you can put it in, under your appendixes. All the transcript, all the jotting down. If not all, some few of it, some few of them, your transcript, few of your jotting down should be put inside your appendices, under appendix. Uh, not in the main section of writing, but under appendix. Not all lah. If you interview 30, not 30 lah. Maybe 30 people, 15 from manager, 15 from the worker. So you take two from the manager, two from the worker. Put as example in your appendix. Okay, same goes with jotting. And then you can also have focus group discussion. Um, usually... Focus group discussion is aligned with qualitative study, qualitative data. However, it can be also quantitative, like observation. So sometimes people do focus group discussion, but they, um, you know, hand, hand over the questionnaire survey or um, asking the opinion and tick, the moderator or the facilitator will tick. That is, if you quantify the opinion, it's become quantitative focus group discussion. Maybe you want to look at the scoring. Uh, so that is quantitative focus group discussion. But uh, if the, the discussion is uh, to, to, to get opinion, you write down the facilitator or the mediator for each table, write it down. So that is qualitative focus group discussion. So whatever quantify is quantitative, whatever Subjective writing down, that is qualitative. So, FGD or observation, it can be quanti or quality. Uh, okay. Same goes with if you do survey approach. Survey approach can be quanti or quality. But interview is clear. Interview is quality. Huh? Uh, okay. Uh, Predetermined semi-structured interview uh, involve gathering people from similar background, experience, so that um, how you select the participant for focus group discussion, same goes with uh, the criteria of selecting sample uh, earlier that I show you, uh, criteria for qualitative sampling, specific characteristic, specific knowledge, specific experience that you detail out. Ethically, ethically, uh, when we do research, when we do or our PhD candidate do research, ethically, we cannot spell out or mention the company name, the person name. Ethically, we cannot say inside our write-up. However, when we have in Viva or we, when we have oral presentation, we can uh, mention the company name. But ethically, we do not put. However, maybe if you do PhD industry, on the other hand, they have a connection or... Um, of the, Kebenaran, dia dapat kebenaran daripada industri, then you can put the company name. Usually that is PhD industry. At UTM, we have PhD industry. Other than that, ethically, we don't put. If we put maybe the access to the thesis itself, to the manuscript, to the thesis, is um, have maybe restricted, not open access or public access. But in, uh, in apa? In research grant, so far, since since I my research grant, uh, I I I um 
outside Mrs. Grant National Mrs. Grant that I have is from InSpan. So I have three, uh, I have received three research grants from InSpan, two already completed as me as the principal investigator. Usually we do spell out because it is to capture the needs of the InSpan. So we do spell out. But for students, usually I, I, I advise them not to put the name, but they can uh, spell out the name of the company or whatever, whoever the individual inside the uh, proposal defense presentation or in the Viva. But research grant, usually we put the name inside the company or whatsoever. Because usually the, the funder will use, whoever lah give you the grant, they, they will use the grant uh, output, the, the finding uh, for their usage. Okay. Uh, okay, this is qualitative and quantitative. So it's not it's not me as yeah. suka suka hati cakap. Uh, so uh, focus group discussion interview seven and target say this is uh, to describe to describe how group things how group things explore interpretation. So there is quality. While uh, if you look at the like if you calculate the keyword also can be quantity. Yeah? Quantifiable data like uh, checklist, uh, scoring also can be quantitative focus group discussion. Uh, more question, fewer people, focus group, uh, less people. Usually it's not more than 10. In one table, it's not more than 10 or one group discussion. If you have like, uh, you have research grant, you have a group, a big grant, so you can have Many table lah, five table. So each table ten, ten, not more than ten. Okay, but each table need to have facilitator or moderator. You cannot leave like you in the stage on the stage and you conduct all ten people. No, it's not town hall. Eh, it's workers group. It's not town hall. So each each table, each group must have one facilitator or moderator. Uh, so this is analysis thematic. Uh, so this is a quantitative. That means quantify graphical frequency. Uh, so just a bit example on the. Uh, usually for we should have guide for our moderator or facilitator. Uh, kind of welcoming introduction. Just just giving example from my experience from my grant. Good morning, welcome to the session. Uh, so, because each facility will be in, on, on their table, kan? So, there are the things we look into, cover uh, housing, facility, social. Uh, so, either in English or in Malay, lah, we should prepare for our moderator or facilitator. I think that's all Finish. Thank you very much. That's all for today. Thank you, Dr. Any question from our participants? Anyone, perhaps? So, if no question, tomorrow we will um, go into the uh, analysis, uh, how to write up, the analysis and their findings and also covered the credibility of finding will look into validity and reliability of the research. I think the part evaluate analysis in paper is actually inclusive in the finding uh, finding slide. That are those are the important component in the finding, also things that you can evaluate inside your under your analysis paper. Okay. Uh, hi Linda. Hi Dr. Taza. Dr. Taza is here. Hi. Hi Dr. Taza. Doctor, saya nak tanya sikit. Um, um, most of the participants of this grant, it's their first time yeah, doing qualitative research and um, the, the things you explained today um, very useful, very um, informative, but some of us are scared, including myself, to start. My question is, is it okay for us to start with something that we think works and then along the way we think we need to adjust and then we adjust accordingly or is it um, very important to have a good planning and uh, stick through with it? What's your opinion about that, eh, Doctor? 
in terms of uh, selecting the right methodology, in terms of selecting or uh, strategizing um, what method for us to take up and things like that. Any advice on that? Okay, actually that one is better for me to answer it tomorrow because uh, I will show some example on the structure and why is it important to plan to have a better structure for your methodology and analysis because that is the only way, like uh, the only way that you can defend your work. However, it's also in general, I will answer that it depends on the amount of the money that you receive for your grant and also the period of the grant. So some if six months, that's very like, very, apa nama, pendek kan kalau six months. So maybe it's not too deep, not maybe not, not important to discuss paradigm. Maybe it's just how you collect data, you get some samples, just usually six months is more like pilot, pilot study lah. Uh, mm -hmm. So if like 12 months, uh, 12 months you can have, but usually through my experience, if research grant 12 months, I also don't discuss paradigm. Uh, I I throw, uh, I cut short to the approaches and uh, technique to collect and analyze data. Mm -hmm. If I use case study or ethnography, because they are not, the panel not, if research grant, they're not really concerned about to, to look at the paradigm because we're not teaching them. They already know we are all doctors. We already undergo the PhD process. But for PhD candidate, they need to understand this. Lah. But usually for research grant, uh, I only discuss the approach and the technique, how I analyze and call, how I collect data and analyze and identify the sample. That's all. Okay. But so uh, give example, a good example on that, I will show tomorrow. Okay. Thank you so much. I would um, mewakili kawan-kawan yang lain juga. We would like to really appreciate you. Thank you so much for the knowledge today. InsyaAllah tomorrow we continue lagi. Sambung oh. lagi tanya soalan. Welcome. Ah, mungkin nak take time to digest kan? Ah, ah, so hari ni macam. <laughs> ah, so uh, like like macam. Uh, sebab uh, to me kalau macam macam I punya grant yang in span tu. Kami kena report, I need to report a progress every three month. Every three month, reporting progress, money are given based on progress. Mm. And we have 12 panel each time we present our progress. So it is very challenging. Uh, I think that the, the, cha the most challenging part is to convince them the sample and the case study are enough and appropriate to cover whatever they want and to show the output is very practical to the user lah, to the practitioner later to use. Mm. So tomorrow I have, I will have some example to show. Thank you so much. So sementara tu, in the meantime, um, uh, we we reflect balik lah on our project and methodology wise and the approach that we're going to adopt lah. And then tomorrow we, we think a little bit more so that we, ha we already have some focus kan. Tomorrow uh -huh. when you give the examples, it'll be more uh, clear, clear, uh, clear and solidified a bit, little bit more lah. Yeah. Okay. Thank All right. So thank much. you. Thank you everybody for joining me. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you. 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 Okay, okay, okay. Alright. Uh, ambil gambar kena buka. Kena buka. Kat camera semua. semua. Thank you. It was good. Good workshop. Dr. Siti nak uh, unshare dulu kot. So uh, masih okay, stop present. Masih nampak. Saya dah, 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 dah. You, you're going to take control. Okay, okay. Okay, smile. Satu, dua, tiga. All right. Okay. Okay, we're done. Okay. Right. See you tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.